Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas TV. I'm Mark Bunting. Today, cannabis is grown primarily in fields and greenhouses, but tomorrow it might be grown in bioreactors just like these. That's the vision of Cannabis Cell, a company pioneering a radically new way of producing cannabis compounds. It's doing so by following one of the golden rules of business. If you want the best deal, cut out the middleman. Cannabis Cell is applying a proprietary technique called bioharvest to produce the active ingredients in cannabis like THC and CBD. In a nutshell, the process extracts the relevant cells from a plant and multiplies them in special bioreactors. The end result is a powder containing the useful compounds, all without needing to spend the time and money growing the actual plant. In a word, the cost savings are enormous. Cannabis Cell estimates its production costs will be just $100 per kilogram, compared to roughly $1,500 for conventional methods. Meanwhile, the capital costs to build its biofarm will be just a sliver of what standard facilities require, and they'll need a fraction of the space. The bioharvest process is already being used elsewhere in the food industry. Now it's a matter of porting it over to cannabis. When that happens, Cannabis Cell CEO Dr. Zaki Rakib believes the technology will have a transformative impact on the industry. So, Dr. Zaki, simple question right out of the gate. What is biofarming? Biofarming is the ability to grow cells of any particular plant or fruit in order to produce directly the active ingredients of that plant or the fruits. Basically, it's the way to bypass the traditional conventional farming. So, Bioharvest is a company you co-founded. It's the parent company of Cannabis Cell. And uh, you're using that technology platform with grapes right now. And you're going to give us a little demonstration, and then we'll move on to uh, how it applies to cannabis. Absolutely. So what I'm holding here inside this sachet is 400 milligrams of a powder that is made of red grape cells. I can take it directly or pour it inside the water. And those 400 milligrams are equivalent to 1,000 grapes. So I am now going to be eating 1,000 grapes in terms of the healthy ingredients, in this case called polyphenols. This would also be equivalent to an entire bottle of red wine, a very good red wine, a Bordeaux. Uh, and here I go. All right. Actual demonstration. Zaki's drinking on our show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, th so that's cool. And you have this product, Vinia. Um, so, so how does this apply to cannabis? The technology that we developed is a platform technology, so it's really not dependent on the particular fruit or plant. We started with a product because we were targeting the health, the preventive health industry, particularly the cardiovascular industry, and that's why we started with this product. We have demonstrated the feasibility of the technology on five different products, including olives, pomegranates, uh, blueberries and a, a particular South African plant called, uh, actually a cactus called Hudia Gordoni. The Bushmans use it before they go hunting because it controls their appetite. I see. So uh, and now we're in the process of adapting this technology to cannabis. This is a technology we've spent over $20 million over the last 10 years in perfecting. We have patents that protect us, but we also have the know-how. It's the same team that developed this technology, that implemented this technology on five different species, that is actually adapting this technology to cannabis. And about 10 million of that uh, is your money, correct? More than that. Yeah, more than that. More okay. than that. All right, so what are the advantages to, to biofarming cannabis versus some of the traditional ways of doing it, and how, how scalable is it? Well, it is very scalable, but I would start with the question, why do you want to grow a plant that is not edible? I mean, one can make the argument about grapes or olives, you want to, eat grapes, you want to eat olives, but why would you want to grow the plant where all you want are the active ingredients that are in the bud? So instead of growing the entire plant, we bypass that and we go directly with the active ingredients. So scalability, we have demonstrated that. We have a factory that produces a vinia. We basically going to be using the same technology, build similar factories and, and get, get this to scale to the extent that we can predict already the price per kilogram. We're in the $100 and sub of that uh, per, per kilogram production. Let alone the fact that the, the capex required to 
build capacity is so much less. You don't need huge space. 100 square meter are sufficient to produce two tons a year. That's by and far an order of magnitude, of, if not more, better than, than the traditional way of doing it. And then, so this cannabis powder produced by biofarming is applicable in medical, recreational, edibles, uh, infused beverages. Right, 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 you well, can yeah, put it in a bar. Yeah, right across the, okay, so there's a bar. There's an example there. That has vinya inside. The same thing would be we can have CBD-based bars or, or beverages or beers or whatnot. The beauty of this technology is the consistency, especially when you look at medicinal applications. There's no way you can create a drug, especially a botanical one, because you need the entire entourage. You need all the cannabinoids acting together to cure a disease or deal with a health situation. So what we have is the consistency. We start with one strain and forever will produce the same strain. We don't need to uh, have to mix or extract. There's no extraction uh, uh, you know, technology here. It's directly producing the entire bouquet, the entire entourage with the ex original molecular structure. There's no genetic modification, by the way. So we start with one set of genomics, we end up with exactly the same. And in terms of your potential uh, customer base, uh, the people that you sell to, is it right across the board? I, I know you want to be uh, uh, business to business, B2B. Indeed. So anyone who faces the consumer by selling recreational products, bars, drinks, or cigarettes, or drugs, uh, ultimately can use our technology, use our product. We sell the raw material, the green powder, and they can do whatever they want. They want to make it oil, they want to mix it with beverages. It's a very easy form, by the way. It's a very useful form uh, for integrating it with other products. And Zaki, take us through the, the timeline for commercialization. 2019 is developing, uh, early 2020, you want to be commercial? What we plan to be doing is complete the development and showing the feasibility of the technology within 2019. We want to anticipate the building of the factory probably in California being a big market and with the restrictions of crossing borders. This technology is mobile. I can build a factory anywhere I want. So uh, that gives us the second half of 2020 to start selling uh, uh, the product basically to our, to our customers. Okay, and then in terms of growth prospects, I know it's early days, but uh, what are the pie, pie in the sky numbers here we're looking at potentially? Now we're looking at tens of millions of dollars in 2021. I mean, once I have the, the production facility, I can increase it dramatically. There's another interesting idea, which would be licensing the technology. There's nothing wrong with adopting the Qualcomm model, for example. As you know, every, every phone has a chip, and every chip, uh, every, everyone who produces a phone, be it Apple or Samsung, has to pay uh, Qualcomm some royalties for using their technology. So in, in, in order to accelerate the adoption curve of the technology, we're not going to replace in one day all the traditional farming, but accelerating the adoption curve would be by licensing the technology and those players or those um, uh, grow, you know, farmers or whatever you call them can use this technology, can build a factory and pay us royalties. And, and how is uh, Cannavicel structured? How are you financed? Do you need more financing for this facility, for example, that you're talking about? So we're currently uh, financed throughout the completion of the R&D program. I am looking at bringing additional funds to accelerate the development, but mostly to anticipate the building of the factory. We're looking at a $5 million uh, factory for 20 tons a year, which would be the right idea for the first factory. Uh, this is uh, not all the money is needed on day one, but it would be good to have those funds available to start the process and, and, and bringing revenue as early as possible. Okay, lastly here, our, our viewers and subscribers, investors in general, they've heard a really interesting concept. They've seen a demonstration. Uh, how do you, um, convince them that, that this is the journey that they want to be on in your stock? And, and, and is part of that uh, convincing them that, uh, that you have a, a really solid background in building companies, multi-billion dollar companies? I strive in disruptive markets. I came in, uh, in the telecom uh, industry in, in the 90s and we invented cable modems. We built a company uh, that had a value of $7 billion in the year 2000. It was a disruptive market, broadband, and we brought a disruptive technology that enabled the broadband market. That's exactly what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to repeat the same success story in a market that I believe would have a much larger impact 
because it would touch everyone. I love the medicinal application of it. I feel very comfortable about my ability to build uh, the company, grow it, uh, put the right human infrastructure. In fact, the same people that have developed this technology started 10 years ago are the same people that are currently uh, uh, developing the adaptation, adapting the technology uh, to cannabis. Uh, I feel that uh, this is a revolution and investors should join now. Don't wait until it's too late.